Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. I 29 male can't seem to forgive my sister 26 female after she completely bailed on me when I was on the brink of being homeless. Since she was a youngster, my sister has only ever had one person on whom she could rely, and that person has always been me. We came from a damaged family, with one parent only present until I was five and the other stuck in an addiction cycle. Because of our circumstances, I matured quickly and shielded her from as much as possible. She was well aware of what was going on, but she was not in the crosshairs of those who wanted her dead. Starting with stealing from our mother to make sure we had food and our costs were covered, I progressed to stealing from others. Since we couldn't rely on our mother, I started working as a part-timer when I was 13 years old. After graduating, I immediately began working two jobs and my family and I moved out. For obvious reasons, I had to push my sister through high school while simultaneously trying to save as much money as possible in order to pay our debts. I was a single parent with a young daughter. Even though she was held back for a year, she eventually graduated at the age of 19, changed her mind, obtained a job, and was living in her own apartment by the time she was 21. The opportunity to accomplish something for myself finally came my way when I graduated with a degree. As a result, I received a much better position. Unfortunately for me, this occurred just as the pandemic began, and I went from newly employed to promptly discharged as a new employee. Obviously, I'm not stating this to pat myself on the back, but rather to emphasize the reasons for my answer being the way it is. I was out of work, on the point of losing my apartment, and I knew there was only one person I could turn to for help, my sister. She had just married and was living, and apparently still lives, with her husband, so I inquired as to whether I may remain for a few weeks, or at most a few months till I got a new job, and she politely declined, stating that she had no such plans. I was taken aback, but the answer remained a no. My apartment was evicted a week or two later, I asked again, and was told no, at this point I am homeless, and the only reason I didn't end up sleeping on the street was because I was able to crash with a few friends until I could find temporary work. I eventually found work in my field again, and am now doing well for myself. That being said, I haven't spoken to my sister since. She's called, texted, hammered on my door, left sobbing voice messages, apologized dozens of times, attempted to explain herself, gone to my workplace, gone to friends, and done everything else in the book. I haven't talked to her in over a year. She has just given birth to a kid and is still desperately trying to get in touch with me. The woman claims that her husband would not allow me to stay, and that he even encouraged me to contact her on many occasions. However, the one time I need her, she basically tells me to F myself, and I believe that this was the last push I needed to finally terminate that chapter of my life. Please accept my apologies however, I guess it's not so horrible after all. Even my friends and girlfriend are begging with me to forgive her, stating that they originally understood, but now feel I'm being a jerk since I'm treating her badly. What would you do in this situation? Update. Thus, I received a flurry of questions about what had occurred and whether or not I would post an update if anything happened, and while I wasn't sure if I would or even should, I eventually decided to go ahead and do it. To begin please accept my apologies on behalf of everyone who made comments on my blog article. As soon as I published my piece, it didn't seem to be gathering any momentum. As a result, I stopped paying attention to it for about a day, only to realize the following day that I had gotten a large number of comments. Unfortunately, when I attempted to respond to many of the comments that I had been reading, I discovered that this subreddit closes comments after a certain number of comments have been posted or a certain amount of karma has been achieved. I apologize for not being aware of this seemingly bizarre regulation, and I accept full responsibility for my ignorance. I did read the bulk of the comments and would want to express my gratitude to everyone who provided advice or just expressed their support in any way. To begin, I'd want to react to a few questions that I was unable to answer as well as correct some inaccuracies in the previous post that I had noticed were being asked quite a bit. 1. Her first no responses were devoid of any acceptable justification. I was not aware of her stated reason, 
which was that her husband was not comfortable with it, until later in the conversation. 2. She had no knowledge she was pregnant at the time of her refusal, and most of what happened transpired before she even realized she was expecting a child. Since the most of this occurred over a year ago, and I even highlighted it in the piece, I'm not sure how that math would even be possible to do correctly. Third, although many posters speculated that I was the reason for her rejection, I am not an anti-vaxxer or filthy in any way. I received my two immunization injections as soon as I was able, and although my personal cleanliness is not exactly anyone's concern, I take one shower every day and my apartment is clean. Four many people's advice and comments appear to be coming from the perspective of functioning families with a functioning family structure, which is not true in this case. The primary reason I am so depressed about the entire situation stems from the fact that this isn't a case of well, I don't want my cousin to stay in my house, he can go somewhere else. The fact that I sacrificed my entire youth and a significant portion of my early adult life for someone I had no part in creating or for whom I bear no responsibility and that the first and only time I ever asked her to do something for me as the only person I could reasonably rely on, and she did nothing, is more than a family spat. It is a straight-up betrayal. That's also my reaction to people who feel she owes me nothing because I choose to be a parent. Anyway, now that it's out of the way, let's get down to business. I made the decision to seek some advice from a few people. Because they don't understand my point of view and probably never will, I told my girlfriend and the friends who were involved by my sister to back off or lose my number. I needed to get that out of my system because I have a tendency to talk about my life as if it's standard, but it's only a standard to me. Fortunately, most people don't have to go through any of that. Of course, I had a more in-depth, face-to-face conversation with my girlfriend and with a few select close pals, but it all boils down to that. It was one of my friends who kept bothering me about it, and I ended up unfriending him, but my GF was understanding, and the most of my friends were either understanding or stated they would drop it. My sister refused to take me in for what turned out to be a few weeks, and I ended up writing her a lengthy email in response. While I won't copy and paste the entire thing here because it contains a lot of personal information and far more horrible stuff that I'm not sure will even be allowed on a sub like this, The gist of it was me explaining to her how her refusal to take me in for what turned out to be a few weeks made me feel, and I detailed it to conclude my email. I told her that even if I believe her version of events and her husband is the reason I am not allowed to stay, it is absolutely worthless to me since it suggests she did not fight for me at all. I also told her that I have no interest in seeing her child at this time, nor in reconnecting with her, and that if my feelings about seeing her child alter in the future, I will be the one to get in touch with her. I counseled her to let this to serve as a harsh lesson to her, just as it has served as a terrible lesson to me. When it comes down to it, I've decided to press on and leave the door open even if it's just by the tiniest of cracks. Although she's reacted a great deal since then, as if she still can't accept it, I haven't replied to her since then.